Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm Nick Riviera. Hi, everybody. Adam Savage. Oh, sorry. I'm, oh whoops. Oh, am I at a different workbench today? What? There we go. Hi, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave uh, with a one-day build that is a really fun one. Uh, as you know, I love props. I make props. I'm always looking for a particular kind of experience with a prop. Uh, and by experience, I'm not always positive what I mean. What I want is for the prop itself to feel in my hand like a real thing. Now, sometimes that may mean that a stunt sword made out of aluminum, even though it's super light, is the right thing, but sometimes it needs to be made out of steel. I never know with any given object. Um, and with some objects, I'll collect something and think, oh, this prop is totally fine. And then a year or two later, I'll find somebody making a version of that that is like way tighter. I grab that immediately because I'm very, I, I, you know, I always want to upgrade. I. I played the saxophone for a little bit many, many years ago, and my sax teacher, Alan Brofman, told me, the moment you find a mouthpiece for a saxophone that works better for you than the one you have, buy it no matter what its expense. And what he was getting at with that was that the relationship between a player's uh, physicality, their embouchure, and the the way the mouthpiece in, uh, uh, integrates with the horn is a very particular relationship. And when you find one that works, it's worth whatever it takes for you to bring it into your uh, uh, sphere of influence. For me, prop making is the same. I'm never not looking for the better version of something that I currently have. I mean, there are a few things I have where that's not going to happen. But so um, that's the long preamble. I've been working on a Mandalorian costume for a long time. I have parts from many, many different makers in this. And when I get to the final assembly, there'll be a lot of people to credit for some beautiful and remarkable work in the space. Uh, and one of Mando's uh, key little artifacts on his suit is his vibro knife. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's called that. Um, and recently on the Replica Props Forum, uh, Crossfire Props was selling this... A beautiful, <coughs> excuse me, a beautiful CNC, uh, all aluminum version of the vibro knife. Yeah, I think it's aluminum. I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. I don't think it's steel. Anyway, um, metal. It's made of metal and it's gorgeous. And uh, I bought it from them. And then I got this really, really lovely uh, uh, letter from Andrew Crossan of Crossfire Props. He's a 20 year old prop maker, uh, making replicas this is his full-time job. Um, he was making various prop kits as lightsabers and blasters, but they were just another product. Uh, he thought of himself as an entrepreneur only, but then watching Rise of Skywalker, uh, he started wanting to make props that he really loved. Uh, and now it's his main focus and goal. Uh, really, I love letters like this from makers. Uh, Andrew also sent another kit that they make, which is the shield generator from Dune, <clears throat> because he knew from watching the channel that I love Dune. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much. Crossfire Props, um, I'm just about to build your your beautiful vibro blade uh, as my one-day build today. So without further ado, yeah, I'm doing it here on this bench just because I've got a razor crest over there and I didn't feel like moving it. I mean, I may end up over there this... Yeah, this table tends to rattle. Whenever you see props wrapped in clear plastic like this with the self-stick closure, you can buy these in any configuration you want. One inch by 10 inches, absolutely. Four by six, three by seven, five by nine. Um, I had to buy these a few years ago and I was astounded by the breadth of choices. Yeah, see, that's some lovely Ziploc bags. Yeah, these parts are aluminum. They are gorgeous. Uh, this finish is really lovely. The CNC machining, I see no tool marks. These just look like manufactured parts. They are absolutely gorgeous. Got a couple of pins. Got a blade. Let me go that out. 
again, the blade is just lovely and it's, it's metal. That's delightful. Just the kind of thing I like in my replicas. The solidity of good metal. We've got some little, little, little dinky things here. And we've got some other little dinky things here. There it is. Oops. Just a second. All right, where was I? Um, <laughs> the doorbell was the largest thing that's ever come to me here at Tested, except for the Form 3L printer. That'll come up later. I've got the instructions here. Step one, insert guiding rods. I believe that's these guys. And there's this guy. Okay, guide rods. Now, step two is that bad boy, sure. And then this one, all right, that keeps it all together. Maybe that's a glue moment or a VHB moment, we'll find out. Uh, okay, right. Rounded corners face inside. Okay. All right, so it's all a CA glue moment, but we're gonna keep on doing a rough assembly here just to feel it out. Uh-huh. You know, the lack of screws in the Star Wars universe <clears throat> can be kind of a pain in the ass, I will tell you. I will tell you. Ah, I see. This goes up here, and the wire goes between those two things. And that's it. That is really, really, really straightforward. Okay. Let's see how I would like to assemble this. I find myself wanting to use thicker rods. Let me go see what I have. That's two millimeter rod. I think that's exactly what this is. Yeah, two millimeter rod, all right. Ah, well, this is a lot tighter, so I'm gonna go with that. much more solid, very happy. These are more like 2.4 millimeter rods, 2.35. Um, there's still a little bit of movement in them. Maybe they're meant to take 2.5 millimeter holes, but still really nice. That's great. It's a lovely looking piece, isn't it? That's really nice. See, part of me wants to pin this. Because I don't like gluing things. I don't love gluing things. That's my issue. I don't love gluing for a prop because it's not, um, it tends to be impermanent. And you know, he suggested that I glue this with CA glue and it's the fits are really nice enough where uh, he's actually accommodated, uh, clearly accommodated some space in the build for glue to actually sit, which is great. And the weather the painting of this will be a different, a different thing. But for right now, for right now. So I can put those on with some VHB. That's certainly true. It's a remarkably simple build. I'm really appreciative of just how simple. And man, the bead blasting that they did, just the finish is gorgeous. 
So, ponder this for a second. All right, I think I have some solutions. The light's really bright here, isn't it? Sun's shining right in my face. I don't have any issues gluing this business. That's gonna be fine because um, that's a real positive graph. So I'm gonna start with that. So we're gonna get a little bit of a, uh... yep, all right. One half. Excellent. Yes, the taller one goes up top. Great. All right, so, yeah. With, um, I know I keep saying I don't love glue. Um, with nice fits like this, this has been machined, it feels like, to accommodate some glue. The, the bead blasted finish has some tooth to it. it. Don't get me wrong, you could still pry this thing apart, which is actually something that I don't mind. I like that kind of functionality. Um, yeah, that laid up nicely. So uh, now I will glue this guy in place after threading that through there. Ladies and germs. Very pleased with that. It's a good grab. Here we go. Okay. Happy so far. Now there's this business of this guy Right, this guy goes like that, yeah? And I am going to, where am I gonna put this pin? I kind of, so if it's, right, it goes like this, yeah? Yes. I don't need this all assembled right now in order to do that. That's just to get started. Oh, excellent. Good, good, good. Super glad. Super glad. So I want to drive that pin, I want to drive this little pin in there and then cut it and file it so it's nice and flat. And then I'll worry about the other side. Excellent. Let's cut that. With brass, a pair of flush cutters should work just fine. I guess I don't need to be super precious about the pinning because, well, this thing gets a lot of weathering later on. Okay, so there's a second pin. Okay. Pray that I have not lost somehow. Oh, no, I haven't. There it is. Whew. Now it's time to do this business, right? Yes. Yeah. Dude, it's looking great, right? It's lovely, lovely. Away we 
you go. Forgetting, I don't need to have this fully assembled in order to do this. And all right, there we go. Pretty good. Beautiful. This is really lovely, frankly. Frankly. All right. So rounded edges go down. We'll do those. We'll do those after. Let's get some BHP on there. So I'm gonna use this VHB to attach these handles. VHB stands for very high bond. Let's give this a shot, shall we? All right, so. Three M VHB. You should always have a couple of versions of this. It comes in multiple thicknesses. It is, as advertised, some of the strongest gription of any double stick tape out there. It can be devilishly difficult to peel up the backing. I oh, come on. Tweezers are your friend in this regard. And so, yeah, I'm just going to uh, pop this down and see if it actually works to hold. And hold. It does very nicely. Excellent. I'll be able to undo that later if I really need to. Yeah, if you got suggestions on how I peel this backing up, I'll take them because I run into this trouble. I, I actually sometimes... Don't reach for this stuff because getting its backing off is such a thing. Oh, there we go. That might be a start. Oh, come on. There we go. Woo! Let's give this a little bit of a squeeze, shall we? This will really help solidify. There we go. It's definitely more force than I would have been able to bring to bear. And now there's two more pieces to glue. I guess I could do this with VHB, but I think I'm gonna do it with the, uh, with the CA. Here we go. And here we go. Rounded edges down. Rounded edges down. Floats a little bit. 
Let it get into position. And hit it with some CA. Uh, uh, uh. Dudes, dudettes, Deuteronomy. That is beautiful. I will have so much fun painting this thing. That is fantastic. Um, that is really, really lovely. Um, Andrew Crossan, what a delightful piece that you have made. Crossfire props. Uh, the instructions were really straightforward and simple. The QR code worked great. I really enjoy seeing people exploring commerce in the prop department. As I've been saying for a few years now, it's a great time to be a cosplayer. The toy companies like Hasbro and Haslabs have been releasing great one-to-one -one props of Star Wars toys and the Marvel Universe toys. Uh, and then there are small makers like Crossfire doing stuff like this that is absolutely just chef's kiss. Really, really lovely. And it feels great. It'll be a terrific boot. I can't remember exactly where this goes on the costume right now. It's been a while, but there we are. One vibroblade, almost in real time. Um, that's how easy this kit was to build. Dudes, thank you for joining me for this quickie one-day build. Yeah, I think I've covered everything. <laughs> Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.